Hello Curious Cutters, welcome back to another video. Do you guys know what Twitter bots are and how they work? If the answer is no, but you are curious about them, keep watching this video. In just a few minutes we'll create a Python bot that is gonna retweet and like new tweets containing specific hashtags. In today's video we'll build on what we saw in the last one. We went through the basics of Twitter API authentication, how Python TweetPy library works, and how it can help us leverage implementation details when consuming Twitter APIs. So if you haven't, I'd suggest you to take a look at that video as well. I'll leave you the link on the card in the top right corner. If you like this type of videos, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Currently, more than 90% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel yet. Don't be shy and join the Curious family. Okay, let's get into it. Now that we know how TweetPy works, let's see how we can create a simple Twitter bot using TweetPy. Bots are simple scripts that are continuously watching for some activity and automatically reacting to it. And there's two ways you can continuously watch for Twitter activity. The first one, by polling, so basically making TweetPy API calls and using Twitter REST APIs every few seconds, get the server response and check if it contains data that you haven't processed before. And the second one, using streams, where you make TweetPy API calls using Twitter streaming APIs. A session is kept open, and then Twitter sends you the new data as it becomes available. Which option to choose will depend on your use case. Using streams is usually the most efficient way, but within TweetPy, you can only watch for activity related to tweets, so it's less flexible. If you are creating a Python bot from scratch without TweetPy, you can use both approaches. For today's bot, we're gonna be using the streaming method. So let me open up the official docs. And here's there's an explanation of how streaming works. And this is the bit we need. An instance of TweetPy stream establishes a streaming session and routes messages to the stream listener instance. So in other words, we'll need to create a stream listener and process the messages or tweets that it receives. If we take a look at the example, we need to create a custom class inheriting from stream listener, then create a stream and using the stream listener, and finally connect to the Twitter API using the stream. So we need an API object as well. We went through the API object in the last video. Okay, let's get into it. Let's import TweetPy and OS. We'll need a create API function. Then we'll create the stream listener class. I'm gonna call it favorite stream listener, and it will inherit all methods from the class tweetpy.streamListener. Then I'll create the main function. I'll define API equals create API. We'll create the stream listener instance equals favorite stream listener. Then we'll create the stream that will serve the tweets to our listener. So I'll define stream equals tweetpy stream. Let me go back to the docs. Auth equals api.auth and listener equals stream listener. Finally, we just need to start the stream with the filter function. Here we can either track specific keywords appearing in tweets or we can follow specific Twitter accounts. In this video, we're gonna use the first. So let me track a set of keywords and then set languages to English only. And finally, Let's also define the main module if name equals main. We'll call the main function and set one or more keywords as array values. Let's just track hashtag Python for now. Okay, so that's the code skeleton of our bot. You see, it's not that complicated. Now we just need to code these two functions. As we saw in the last video, API will be the main object to perform any actions on our Twitter account. So we need to authenticate ourselves. And to do that, we need a set of keys and secrets that you can generate on your Twitter developer account. So for security reasons, I've exported my keys and tokens as environment variables. And in this script, I'm just gonna read from these environment variables. So I'm gonna define consumer key equals OS, get environment variable, Twitter consumer key. And I'm gonna do the same for the rest of the keys and tokens. So I'll change that to consumer secret, then access token, and finally access token secret. As a recap, the consumer key and consumer secret are the username and passwords of your Twitter developer application. 
when making the API requests. And the access token and access token secret are the Twitter account the request is made on behalf of. Once we have those, we need to create an auth object as TwiPy auth handler and pass it the consumer key and consumer secret. Next, we'll call auth set access token and pass in access token and access token secret to authenticate ourselves. And finally, we'll create the API object as TwiPy API. We'll use the auth object and then we'll set wait on rate limit equals true and wait on rate limit notify equals true as well. And we just need to return this object. If you want to, we can also verify this works using a try block. So try API verify credentials, except exception as E, then raise the exception. Okay, that should be it for this function. Now we just need to complete the stream listener class by overriding the onStatus method. And for now, let's just print the status object itself. So this bot is not going to do anything. Let's execute the script. And we start receiving data already. We see the status ID, the status creation time, the text, but it's not really visual. So let me import JSON and then change that to JSON dumps status dot JSON and have some indentation. Okay, let me pause this again. We see the status ID, the status creation date, the actual status text, and of course it contains the keyword that we are tracking. Then we have some other useful information. In reply to status ID is null, means that this tweet is not a reply or comment to a tweet. We also have large amount of information from the owner or user of this tweet, information about the retweeted user, in this case, since it is a retweet. And down below, there are some useful attributes as well. Favorited indicates whether the status has been liked by our account and retweeted whether it's been retweeted, of course. These are both set to false at the moment. Great, so we can use this information and do something interesting with our bot. So we'll say, if the tweet hasn't been liked, then try status favorite, so like this tweet. Except exception as E, then we can print already liked. If we do like the tweet, then we can say tweet ID created at from this user has been liked and then pass status ID, status created at and status user screen name. Lastly, let's print the status text as well. And this will give us enough information right now. However, as I said, I don't want to like my own tweets and I don't want to like the replies to an original tweet either. So just original tweets. So we can also add if status in reply to status ID is not none. So as I said, it is a reply or the status user ID equals me.id, meaning it is a tweet of my own, then skip it and let's process the next status. And what is this me object? Well, it contains the information from my own Twitter account. So basically it identifies me. And we can generate it from the API object right here. So let's pass API to the stream listener as a parameter. And now we need to create an init method for this class. We'll receive API. And then we can say self API equals API and self.me equals self API.me. And now we need to change me to self.me. Okay, that should be it. Let's run the script. Okay, seems we are liking the first tweets already. We're getting the status text as well. And let's stop the execution for a moment. Let me switch to my Twitter account, see if we can recognize some of these tweets. Since we're on it, if you're liking this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter as well. Let's go to likes and check the last ones. So for example, if I search for it didn't do the last time, we see as one of my latest likes, great. 
If we check another one, for instance, AI is everywhere and evolving. It's also there and it has also been liked by our bot. Great. Okay, now we can follow the same approach to retweet statuses. Let's copy the entire block and now change status.favorited to retweet it. We'll use status.retweet and we'll change the prints as well. Let's execute the code. And now for each of the new statuses, we should be liking and retweeting them. As you see, the tweet has been liked and retweeted, liked and retweeted. And from time to time, we'll get to listen to a tweet that has already been liked in the past. No problem. Okay, so that's the bot itself. As you can see, the bot keeps running forever or until you reach your rate limits. And I am currently stopping it manually, right? You could run it as a cron job, so your system can launch this bot every few minutes or every few hours, and you can set some type of counters to stop the bot whenever it does, for instance, 100 likes at once. So let's code that. On our init function, let's define some counters. So self favorites equals zero, self retweets equals zero, and then the maximum number of likes and retweets. So self max favorites equals two and self max retweets equals two, just for now. Then once you've liked a tweet, you need to increase the favorites counter. And if you do retweet a tweet, then you need to increase the retweets counter. Then when it's done processing them, you can write a condition saying if the number of favorites is larger or equal than the maximum number of favorites or the number of retweets is larger than the maximum number of retweets, then we'll stop the execution. So we'll use sys.exit and we need to import the sys library. Okay, so that should do it. That's the code for today. As a recap, we need to create the API object that authenticates ourselves and authorizes us to perform actions on behalf of our Twitter account. Then we pass this object to the stream listener and this custom stream listener just checks if the new tweet is a reply to a tweet or if it's a tweet of our own. Otherwise, it likes it and retweets it until we've liked and retweeted X amount of tweets. And then the bot stops. So let's run it. Liked and retweeted, liked and retweeted, and then it stops. We can increase the counter to 10. And after a few seconds, we get to 10 and it stops as well. Great. Okay, guys, that's it for today. This is just a simple example of how to write a Twitter bot that likes and retweets stuff containing specific keywords using the streaming approach on TweetPie. If you wanted to do something else, just remember you need to change this function, the onStatus method, and that would be it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video tutorial and learned something different today. If you have, please like the video, subscribe to the channel to be part of the curious family and click on the ring bell to get notified when I upload new content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.